Or Where's get the set. camera? Go. It's just in here. You're rolling. Are you sure your finger's not over it? I'm positive. Oh, great. Because okay. I can see you. All right. So here we go. All right. So we, we evaluated all of the areas. And what we know right now with Lydia is that she has extreme amount, an extreme amount of language um, that she's trying to communicate when she's slowed down and asked to repeat and she thinks through what she's doing, she can get better clarity. But when we go back and we look at her motor system, looking at all the systems that, that work together for speech, <coughs> abdominal grating, velopharyngeal movement, movement in the jaw, movement in the lips, and movement in the tongue, they're not dissociating quite at the level that I would want for a child her age. So if you compared her to her typical peers, her muscle system is not at the same level. However, her language system appears to be far greater. So when, when we have to start picking and choosing for Lydia what our expectations are and our goals should be, my expectation is that Lydia should have perfectly clear speech uh, because we know from just seeing how she's developed so far, she, she has she has a lot more skill than a lot of a lot of kids that we work with. Um, from a speech perspective, I think she's probably gotten as far as she's going to get in just practicing the language side of things. If we don't start trying to get her to uh, move her muscles in better ways, stabilize her jaw, develop better lip jaw dissociation and tongue jaw dissociation. You know, that clarity piece is just going to continue to be really difficult. And because Lydia is so bright and we know that she's going to be doing such high-level things with her life, um, you know, that clarity is going to be more important to her than to many children uh, that we work with. So I just feel strongly that 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 clarity piece is going to be the make or break for her in her, in her future and there's no reason to look at where she is now and look at where she can go and not expect perfectly normal uh, clarity. So some of the issues that I'm concerned with right now are her jaw stability. Uh, Lydia uses a lot of extra jaw movement when she talks, uh, unless she's really thinking about it. She has a jaw jet that goes to the left, and as we've evaluated her, we found that she has much more skill on her right side than she does on her left side. So that that skill over here is kind of taking over and pushing her jaw into abnormal position. So when she, the longer her sentences get and the more she needs to rely on that jaw stability, the more it's not there. And that's why we can understand a lot of things when Lydia says one or two words, but or eight, even three words, but when she starts to speak in conversation and gets going really quickly, we're losing a lot of that clarity because her jaw isn't staying where it needs to. The other big area of concern is her tongue mobile, her tongue movements. Um, Lydia still has a tongue thrust, which is a, a forward movement of the tongue. She's not using what we call tongue retraction uh, sufficiently, and that tongue retraction is what gives you your stability in your tongue to allow your tongue tip and all of those fine-tuned movements when we chew and swallow and when we speak to develop. So her tongue position or her oral place, her tongue placement during speech is more forward than it needs to be. So we're gonna do a lot of things, I'm suggesting a lot of things to get more tongue retraction for that stability and then helping her learn to move her tongue around in her mouth uh, much more efficiently than she's doing at the moment. So let's just look at each one of the the activities that we want Lydia to do, and then we'll talk about why why we want her to do it um, as part of this therapy and what it what its relationship is to speech. That's the most important part. If you can understand what the activity is, why you're doing it, and where you're going with your speech and your feeding goals, it'll all start to make a little more sense. So one of the things that we want to look at right now is Lydia has some nice use of her lips for some of the skills that we're looking at in inner speech but she's not using her cheeks uh, with that movement. And your cheeks is what provides some of that stability to hold your jaw in place 
and to allow your lips to move independently and without um, over, over tension or over production of the movement. So if you, if you look at, at her cheeks, we don't have the cheekbones here. And this is one of the common characteristics that we look at with kids with Down syndrome is the flatness or the low tone through the cheeks. And if we can get those cheeks working, we'll get more of that cheekbone um, look. We should get some more rounding through here, which is going to um, aesthetically change your face quite a bit. And I'm expecting that we're going to see some of those changes probably within the next six months. Um, of beginning because she has some nice skills to start with. But one of the things we've figured, found out is that when we apply pressure into Lydia's cheeks, she uses a lot of her lip muscles and she doesn't know how to access these yet. yet. So the muscle memory for using her cheek muscles just isn't there. So we're gonna Lydia, we're gonna we're gonna try and squeeze five times. One and relax. Remember how we relaxed? Two and relax. Three. Relax, relax, there you go, four, relax, and five. Good, and you see that little bit of pulling in on this on the tool here, that's the beginnings of her using that, that cheek muscle a little bit more, where when we did this earlier today, there was no movement, so every little, every 